Hello everyone. In this video, I will demonstrate how I built a youth pitching mount. I'll go through a list of materials as well as a step-by-step -step instructions on how it is assembled. I uh, hope you enjoy it and please don't hesitate to add questions in the comments. I'll, uh, I'll respond as time permits. Hope you enjoy it. The list of materials includes a sheet of treated plywood, some common boards, a roll of outdoor turf, uh, a number of two by fours, one box of exterior screws, a can of water guard or sealer, tube of liquid nails, and two caster wheels. And I would like to say, please make sure you have the experience with power tools and you wear protective gear and follow the safety guidelines uh, included in your owner manuals uh, of each tool. And when in doubt, simply just call someone who's qualified to give you a hand. Okay, so the first cut you want to uh, you want to do is the base, and that's going to be 22 inches. So set up your plywood, use a T-square, make a nice line, and make that first cut. And again, this is for the base of the mound. The next series of cuts is going to be on your eight foot one by tens. So you want to go 22 inches uh, and make a mark. If you want it flush up against the back of the base, I would go 21. But either way, you'll most likely have to shave off some of the front of the mound uh, in a later step. The other mark you want to make is two inches off the bottom of that one by 10. Use a chalk line, make sure it's tight, snap it back and get a nice straight line to cut on. Once that is done on each of the eight foot one by 10s, you want to take the six foot one by 10 and you want to cut that down to four feet. That is going to be part of the base of the mound across the rear of the mound. Next, Secure the caster wheels four inches from the corner at the bottom of that four foot base. Now, I wouldn't follow my instructions here and use screws. I would drill holes and use bolts with lock washers and nuts. It'll be a little bit more secure. Okay, next, run your tape measure across that four foot piece and make marks at 16 and 32. Uh, lay out those eight foot one by tens and secure them into the base with a couple of wood screws. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to start cutting the two by fours and adding them as supports. The key there is to make sure that they're flush up against the one by tens. Uh, you'll also add the four foot sheet of treated plywood, which acts as the base to the mound. And you're gonna to wanna to make a mark across each one by 10. That is where you'll definitely want to add some supports. So cut each two by four, again, make sure they're flush, and you want those supports to actually support both sheets of plywood uh, right at the seam. In this next clip, you'll see that I've added a number of supports. Now, the number of supports needed may vary depending on what type of plywood you have and also the weight of the pitcher. I've gone on the stronger side, uh, but as you add support, you can always put the plywood on top, walk on it, see where the weak points are, and actually adjust accordingly. Two things I'd like to point out, as you're adding the support beams, make sure that the mound from rear to front stays four feet wide. And that's to ensure that the plywood is flush on each side. You also wanna make sure that if you do see any weak spots that you address it before you secure the plywood to the actual mound, which is shown in the next step. So take your time on this step and make sure that all of the supports needed are done first. Next up, add the four foot sheet of plywood, uh, the 22 inch wide plywood to the base. And what you wanna do is just move it forward a bit so that you can make lines where each of the one by tens uh, are positioned. This will help as we make chalk lines and we secure the plywood to the mound. 
Now position the plywood on top of the mound. Make sure it's square and flush up against the sides. Make your truck lines and then simply secure or screw the plywood into the 1x10s. I went every 16, 18, 20 inches, but you're going to want to make sure that that plywood's tight to the 1x10s. Next, lay out a tarp and flip the mound upside down. This is where you want to apply the water guard or sealer. Just make sure you you have good coverage across all of the untreated pieces of wood, which will include the 1x10s if you used common boards and most of the supports. This will help prevent it from, from rotting. Okay, next you're going to want to roll out your outdoor turf. And you'll also want to get your tape measure, scissors, your liquid nails, a staple gun, a utility knife, and you want to actually get your pitching rubber that you're going to use. I went with an 18 inch uh, pitching rubber. Uh, and what you want to do is make sure that one side of the mound is flush so that that turf is even with the base. And then on, on the other side, you can let it overhang. What we're gonna do is we're just going to put a few staples across the back so it's secure. Uh, and then in the next step, we're gonna work on making the cut for the actual pitching rubber. Next, position the pitching rubber where you would like it. I positioned it somewhat in the middle, but towards the rear of the mound. And then use your utility knife and make a nice clean cut around the rubber. Next, using your utility knife, make the trim cut all the way around the mound. Just make sure it's nice and flush. You want to make that cut right at the base of the 1x10 all the way around on each side. Next, you want to roll back the outdoor turf so that you can sweep the deck of the mound. You want to make sure it's nice and clean before adding the liquid nails. Uh, and when you add the liquid nails, uh, I purchased the type that requires a, a caulking gun. Just make sure that you apply it across the entire deck of the mound. Next, unroll the turf onto the deck of the mound. And you'll also want to put some extra liquid nails on the mound. And what I did was I just secured it in the cutout that we previously did. And you're going to want to pull that turf nice and tight. And what I did was I just added staples every 8 to 10, 12 inches all the way around, making sure that the turf was nice and tight from rear to front. Then you want to repeat the same process for the sides, apply the liquid nails, and then I also added staples across the bottom of the base, again, making sure that it's nice and tight. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I would recommend using bolts with your caster wheels. Uh, and in this clip, you could see that I drilled pilot holes and I went back and I added bolts with lock washers. Uh, once I did this, the wheels were a lot more secure. So don't make the same mistake I did and start out with bolts right out of the gate. This last step I consider optional, but what I've done is add a piece of white corner molding using liquid nails and my nail gun. I feel it not only dresses up the mound, but it also uh, avoids a trip hazard. Younger players can see the front of the start of the front of the mound to be able to step up, especially if you're using it on grass. And that's it. Just a few last uh, pointers. Uh, when moving the mound, make sure that you have a good grip in the front and make sure you pick it up with a proper angle so that the caster wheels catch in the back. Obviously, you want to make sure that it's positioned on level ground and make sure that you give it enough time before you start using it. Uh, the liquid nails has a curing time depending on temperature. Uh, and again, if you have any questions, post them in the comments below. I will respond to them and, uh, and good luck. I hope you enjoyed my video. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>